everybody. Welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo. I'm your host, and I'm going to be giving you guys another fan casting video today. Today, I'm going to be presenting to you guys fan casting the MCU's Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer the most powerful cosmic hero that most people are aware of. Now, the reason for this is because he actually got a film. There was a TV show and a film, Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer. He was played by two individuals I'll show in just a second, but I'm really excited for this one. I've been waiting for this for a very long time and the Fox Disney deal is about to end. It's about to come to a close and they are going to own the rights to the Fox property characters, which would include Galactus and the Silver Surfer. And the Silver Surfer is one of my personal favorites. He was one of the only uh, characters in my childhood that I was aware of as far as Marvel cosmic heroes. And uh, I, was, I was so intrigued by watching reruns of the TV show um, that was on, I, I believe it was Fox. It was so cool, it was so great, but it showed that he was somebody that was a very complex character. He was working for an entity that was kind of a neutral evil where he has to do horrific and devastating things all across the universe, but it's for his own self-preservation. He doesn't mean any ill will by it, he just ne needs to survive. And then Silver Surfer ends up having to come into an alliance with him to protect his own homeworld. And uh, he's well, well intended, but he uh, has his memories blocked. And so a lot of people don't know this, but he is he's someone that was one thing, a peace loving, um, almost a pacifist, but he had just come to a, a point with his his people and their culture in this awesome place called Zen La, which is like a paradise in space. And uh, that would allow them to, you know, not have to worry about like war and things like that. They had risen above that. They found a way to get along with everybody. And so um, in this you know, hypothetical dreamland, which was his home planet, it then was coming to a, a disastrous end as Galactus approached to feed. And uh, he's the world eater. And so it would have destroyed all the life there, but to save his planet, to save the woman he loves, Shalaba, Norin Rad goes and makes a treaty with uh, Galactus and says, you need to survive, you need to find planets, and you, you must continue to go from planet to planet to continue to survive. What if I were to provide myself to be your herald and I can go and find planets with, um, you know, and, and help you survive? And then so Galactus accepts his deal, uh, sit, moves away from Zen Law, allows it to continue to exist. But Norrin Rad was tricked because Galactus knew that he would always want to return to his home planet. And so he he blocked out his memory. And so Norrin had intended to keep Galactus away from that that life that um, all, all intelligent life in the galaxy and just take them to planets that are teeming with life but not intelligent life. And so, uh, like plants and things like that were okay, but not people. And, uh, and so, in that same way, he was, Ill, he was, he was treated, um, he was turned into something that he never intended himself to be. Uh, basically a split personality due to memory loss. And so um, he ends up being this bad guy for a little bit, but then he goes good once he regains his memory of who he is and what he stands for. So I'm gonna not waste too much time. The reason why I brought all of that up is because the actors that I picked, I picked because I saw certain things about uh, Norrin Rad in them, and I believe that they could do this character justice. So I'm gonna get into this and I'll explain that as we go. Ne all right, so first up, we have the Silver Surfer, and as it says down here, uh, it was previously played by Doug Jones, who was recently in The Shape of Water. Um, very gangly looking guy, very narrow, um, but his name, uh, Doug Jones, he was in Rise of the Silver Surfer, along with Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne also played the Silver Surfer, but in a vocal role. So the two of them together created the Silver Surfer we've all seen on the big screen. In a very rushed and, and uh, hurried way, they tried to skim through the story and the impact of uh, the Silver Surfer, who he is, how powerful he is, um, and they really underplayed uh, the the might of the of the Silver Surfer. But uh, what I intend to do is just get them uh, some justice, do them some good, and let's get fan casting. I want to get you guys um, excited about this. I want to I want to see what Marvel's going to do with the Silver Surfer on the big screen. So let's get going. All right, first up, my my number one pick, and he really is my number one pick. I didn't really put these in order of favorite, except for this one. 
Ricky Whittle is my number one favorite for this role. And uh, the first time I saw him was on the 100. Uh, on the 100, he's also on American Gods, Napoli Ever After. Um, but he's six foot two, very good stature, and also 37 years old, which is right in the middle. So if you want like someone that looks a little bit older, you can have that. If you want someone that looks a little bit younger, you can also have that. And um, he's uh, incredibly ripped. This guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys some pictures. But check this out. A lot of a lot of people have been seeing what I've seen here. Um, Ricky Whittle, Silver Surfer. His head shape, his nose, his uh, cheeks, his jaw, everything looks like the comic book version of the Silver Surfer here. Um, and it's gonna, I, I don't know why I decided to put him in the front of this fan casting because everything else is going to probably be close, but I don't know if anything can truly compare to Ricky Whittle as Silver Surfer. Just take a look at this. Some people have like Mahershala Ali and um, I forget I forget this guy's name, forgive me, but um, he's the guy that plays Killmonger's father in Black Panther. Um, so these guys uh, are, are this person's, actually I know this guy, Fan Fantasy Fancast 23. Uh, was in uh, the first um, fan casting summit. So uh, you guys should check that out. But here we go. Uh, Silver Surfer, uh, looking like a really good a really good cross combination. Look at his cheekbones. So Mahershala Ali kind of has that as well, the cheekbones that kind of come inward um, right here. He, But he has the full thing. Look at the everything, the head shape, face shape, eyes. Look at all of it. I mean, everything about him just says, I am the Silver Surfer, pick me. And I'm gonna show you guys this. This is his fitness pictures. Um, but holy cow, he has that like superhero physique already. He wouldn't even have to get into shape. Look at the pectoral shape. Look at the chest right here. And then look at the chest right here. I'm gonna go back for you. So see this chest? Look at that chest. I'm telling you, like literally everything. He, this guy was born to play Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer. And one, what's more is that I mentioned I'd seen him on the 100. If you guys have seen the 100, you've ar you've already seen what I'm about to say. But one thing about Norrin Rad, and then the stories that are told from the perspective of the Silver Surfer and otherwise, where he's involved, he narrates a lot of his own comic through thought. And one of the first things I, I recognized about his character Lincoln on the 100 was that he's very. He is a very introverted character where he's he's thinking more or less more so than he speaks and he does in the in the show speak the language of the humans who have come to earth um, but also you know him being a grounder they, they think that he doesn't understand them or speak their language but really he's just internalizing all of his thoughts and so he's got already that persona down very serious very powerful character but also is able to connect compassionately with uh, his opponents, his enemies, that kind of stuff. And so in that same way, he's very, very much already playing characters like Norrin Rad. Um, and so I, I would definitely propose him for the first one. So again, um, Ricky Whittle is six foot two, 37 years of age, if I'm not mistaken. So let's get moving to the next one. The next one is Sam Witwer. And so Sam Witwer is six foot one, 41 years of age. Right now, he's on Supergirl. He was on Smallville where he played Doomsday. And he's also been in Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars, or Solo, A Star Wars Story, where in both of those and Star Wars Rebels, he plays Darth Maul, uh, the voice of Darth Maul. And so this guy is an incredibly powerful vocal actor, but he's also a really talented emotional actor. And he's also uh, freaking ripped. So let me just, uh, let me skip forward so that you guys can see this. Um, let me see, I didn't click this really quick. There's not a lot of images. I think I'm probably one of the few people that have thought of him for the role of the Silver Surfer, I would imagine. I'm sure there's more, but basically, um, let me see if I could pull up a fitness picture. Let me see if I can get this guys this this going for you. Fitness. Okay, so there's probably some some pictures of him in like a towel. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to be super like weird about it. But he's a pretty ripped guy. He's not jacked out of his mind, but he's pretty ripped. Um, this one. I think that's a Photoshop. Yeah. So, uh, nevertheless, this guy. Look at his jaw. His cheekbones. This is again what I was talking about, and I put him second because I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek into uh, a, another project I've been working on. I won't name what it is, but I wanted to bring this into the light. Okay, so you guys are going to be able to see this here. 
All right, so you see this? I did this Photoshop for you guys. So on the left, you guys can see that's Sam Witwer. Um, and I just, I uh, edited the image a little bit for you so you could see half of him being him, or rather Norrin Rad, and then the other half being Silver Surfer. And again, with my number one pick, Ricky Whittle, the same thing. Um, Chrome on one side ready for Silver Surfer, and then the other side is him. Both sides are them for both guys. I just edited it so that it would look like metal. That way you guys could get a taste of what that could possibly look like. Even though I'm not a great Photoshop artist, um, I was able to get at least this done for you. So I'm gonna take that back. That way you guys uh, can get back to the fan casting, but that's something I wanted to show you guys. That way you could kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here. But this guy does such a good job, and especially Smallville, um, playing the role of Doomsday. He was playing um, a paramedic that starts to kind of run out of uh, like his own control. And he starts to realize that he himself is not who he believes himself to be, but rather he is a Kryptonian monster sent to Earth with these innate urges to destroy. And, uh, and so then he ends up kind of becoming a bad guy against his own will. And then uh, in the end, uh, losing control. But in the case of Silver Surfer, it would be the same story, but at the end, he would gain control. He would gain his memories back and then face off with uh, Galactus and then begin a, n a whole nother set of journeys um, after that. And so this is, this is someone that I think would do really well, especially not just as a Silver Surfer, but as Norin Rad. I think he would do great. And so uh, anyway, that's my second pick. So not to waste too much time, let me recap that guy. Sam Witwer, six foot one, 41 years of age. And again, he's on Supergirl uh, in this new season, but I haven't seen it just yet. I'm, I was not gonna watch it, but now I think I might have to just because he's in it. So next up, Michael Rosenbaum. So Michael Rosenbaum is 46 years of age and six foot tall. Now, if you guys have seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2, if you've seen Impastor, if you've seen Smallville, he was in those. And so he was also in uh, Justice League from 2001 to 2004, the animated TV show, where he played the voice of The Flash, Wally West. Um, so he's, he's a big nerd. He's been around the DC scene for quite some time, but more recently as a friend of James Gunn was able to get in uh, to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 as the character Martinex, who was originally one of the Guardians of the Galaxy on the very first Guardians of the Galaxy team alongside Stakar, who was played by Sylvester Stallone. So he is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe technically, but he's completely unrecognizable. Um, and so Michael Rosenbaum, a lot of people because of his time on Smallville where he played Lex Luthor being bald, um, have seen him and been like, you know what? He should be the Silver Surfer. And I completely agree. Just take a look at this image. Um, head shape, face shape, uh, eyes pretty close. Um, the forehead doesn't seem as aggressive, but he has some serious acting range. This guy can play sweet, he can play charming, he can play uh, hyper intelligent, he can play um, like raging out, like the guy is just powerful. And I think he would do really, really well in the role of um, the Silver Surfer. So, and it, as Norrin Rad, I think he would also do really well. He's really good at being uh, tender and compassionate. And that was one of the reasons why he's a fan favorite, Lex Luthor, um, even among all the other people who have played Lex Luthor over the years um, because of the amount of range that he provided and allowed people, the viewers, to connect with his performance. So in that way, I think that he would be a great choice for uh, Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer. And again, really quick, if you guys uh, didn't see him as Martin X, this is what he looked like. So that was, that was basically uh, him as Martin X. This is him in reality, but it's basically the same thing. So that's him, and this is him next to Sylvester Stallone. Uh, they had to CGI and motion capture his uh, his face to make him look comic book accurate. But man, does he look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead. Let me recap him before we move forward. So Michael Rosenbaum, six feet tall, 46 years of age. So he is a little bit older, but I think that that's still fine. It just, it'd be good. So next up we have, Dan Stevens, and if you guys have seen Downton Abbey, then you've seen him. He was, I think, Matthew. If, you see, uh, if you've seen Beauty and the Beast, he was Beast. Um, and if you've seen Legion, he's the main character. I'm not gonna spoil the name. And then he was also, uh, he was in a few other things as well. But everything I've seen him in, 
was nothing like any of the other things I've seen in him. Other than James McAvoy, he's probably one of the, the most well-rounded actors I've ever seen. He can do literally anything. The guy's incredible um, as an actor. He, he just, he can literally, if you say you want horror, he can do horror. If you want drama, you can do drama. If you want action, he can do action. Um, if you, if you want this guy to do like psychedelic creep, you can, he can do that. He can do anything. And, um, and not only for that reason, but because, um, I think that he looks the part good height, six feet tall is pretty good, pretty, you know, fairly on the, a little bit on the, not older, but he's right in that pocket. 36 years of age is not that old. It's not old really. And, um, and so I'm going to show you guys kind of what I'm seeing here. This is not, I don't think his best picture to compare. Um, in fact, I probably would have gone something a little bit more along the lines of either this, this stock image right here, or, um, or something like this, and then just Photoshop the hair away. But, um, pretty much, I think that he would do really well in the role of silver surfer. Cause again, you have to have someone that can basically, um, think to themselves and narrate their own story. And in Legion, you see a lot of that. He plays someone that's in a psych ward and a lot of the, the story is basically him thinking to himself. And so it, it progresses beyond that, of course, but there is a lot where that happens. And so I think that would be good. And this again is Ricky Whittle. So uh, not to go back to that, but again, uh, a lot of people have seen that. And I think that Dan Stevens would do a really, really fine job in the role as well. Uh, crazy good range he could seriously pull off that like that memory loss like who am I why am I doing this I, I'm doing all these horrendous acts and leading Galactus to uh, destroy these worlds but I'm all of a sudden feeling compassionate for the people that are perishing and fleeing so I, I think he could do really well next um, let me just recap his stats six feet tall 36 years of age which makes him the youngest on my list so far second youngest on the list altogether. Oh no, I'm sorry, third, uh, third youngest. So uh, anyway, let me just move forward. Uh, let me know what you guys think about him down below. I, I really hope that the Fox, before I move on, the Fox characters, I hope that we get a chance to recycle those guys because there's some seriously awesome talent like Dan Stevens, um, who would be otherwise wasted if like Legion doesn't carry over into the Disney deal. So anyway, moving on, we have Matt Lanter. Uh, at 35 years of age and he's five foot ten so not super tall but you know it's not short either that's I think that's about nav national average or a little bit above that and uh, 35 is uh, good I would say the perfect age you're looking for uh, to play the silver surfer now if you guys have seen the Clone Wars like Star Wars the Clone Wars the animated show um, he plays he the voice of Anakin Skywalker and he is arguably everybody's favorite Anakin Skywalker of all time uh, super, super good, uh, really funny, charming, uh, masculine. He's a very masculine Anakin Skywalker. That's something that we didn't really get a whole lot of um, in uh, the prequels. In fact, I think that's everybody's number one complaint. Uh, not mine really, but uh, a lot of people say that, you know, like not only was the dialogue cheesy, um, some not so great script, but at the same time, a lot of people didn't appreciate Hayden Christensen's performance. I did. I really liked Hayden, but uh, I'm not the vast majority here. I'm in the minority. And so Matt Lanter ends up being um, almost everybody's favorite Anakin because he is a lot more masculine, a lot more macho. And then you could really see him um, becoming Vader a lot more than you can see Hayden Christensen. So um, I think he would be good. Now let's take a look at him. Okay, so let's go forward. They didn't have any fan casting images of him as the silver surfer. However, they did have images of him as an actual surfer. Um, and so he's, uh, these are some old photos. These are not very recent. This is, uh, back in the, I don't know. When is this? This is, um, if I could guess, I'd say this is closer to 2010 or something like that. But, um, the guy is pretty fit. Um, overall and obviously he could get a lot more shredded for the for his roles um, probably reason being him not being super shredded is just because he's a he's a vocal actor for the for a lot of his acting until he got onto timeless so once he got onto the show timeless um, now he's on screen and man he did a really really good job uh, in that show I I would not have watched that show if it wasn't for him and Goran Visnik um, the the guy who kind of plays the uh, antagonist of the show and I really like both of these people in their roles, um, but I think he would do a really good job playing this. Now, 
the Silver Surfer. Let me see if I can cross reference uh, for you guys. The Silver Surfer. Even that face, which is actually technically uh, Doug Jones, it does kind of look a lot like uh, like a normal a normal picture of Matt Lanter. He's got a very like um, uh, I would say kind of neutral face where he's got he's got strong features, but not super chiseled and not super broad either. So he's he's kind of like a happy medium. He could visually fit basically a a, a plethora of different roles that if you wanted to put him in just on visual alone. Um, but I think that he could also play the role of Norrin Rad very, very well. Um, he has a, a story arc in Timeless where he, he's, he's suffering through a lot of personal loss. And that's a lot of what the Silver Surfer deals with is that he, he lost his home world in the deal with Galactus. And he, ha he struggles to make his way home and find his home. I'm not going to get too much into the details there. But anyway, I think he would do well. Uh, so next up. This one is a little bit outside the box, um, but let me, before I go to the bonus picks, let me recap the top five. So first up we have, um, we have Ricky Whittle uh, at 37 years old, six foot two. We have Sam Whitwer, uh, six foot one, 41 years of age. We have Michael Rosenbaum, six foot tall, 46 years of age. Dan Stevens, six foot tall, 36 years of age. And we have Matt Lanter, five foot 10, 35 years of age. Um, so I really like all these guys, but I really also enjoy these bonus picks and I can't wait for you guys to see these. So let's not waste too much time and get into these. The reason they're in the bonus picks is because I think they're a little more unlikely than some of these other ones. So let's just, let's jump in anyway. So first up is Brian Patrick Wade. Now you might recognize this guy from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so he's he was on The Big Bang Theory, uh, The Guardian, Bring It On Again, uh, Trust No One, uh, and something called Control Alt Delete, which I'm not aware of. But they have um, let me let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about. He was on Agents of Shield, and he plays Absorbing Man. And when he plays Absorbing Man, this is a very powerful character in the comics. He's basically fought everyone, um, like Spider Man, uh, Daredevil. Like there's a lot of people he's gone up against. He's really really tough and really strong and he's a, a really crazy cool bad guy but there's also an arc in the comics where he plays a good guy and so um crusher creel is just a fantastic character to have in your comics whether you want him to be good or bad i think there was even a stint where he joined the avengers uh but i was i was really hoping they were going to draft this guy I really like the actor brian patrick wade um and i think that he would be great now i i pulled this up because this kind of gives you an image. It's not steel. This is him as pavement, basically, because he absorbs any substance, right? So he touches the road and he becomes the road, basically. Um, but yeah, he like he also touches metal, and then uh, and tires and stuff and uh, anything he wants, he can he can touch and then become. So if he touches metal, he starts to become metal. And uh, when he did that in the show, it made me see. Oh my gosh, he would be the Silver Surfer perfectly. And so let me just skip on forward um, and see if anybody else was seeing what I'm seeing. And by the way, just take a look at this. I want to point this out. So look at that, that physique and then this physique, that physique, this physique, and then Brian Patrick Wade bald um, is even more compelling. So obviously this is the picture we just saw of him uh, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but man, is this guy... Uh, that's not him. Where's Brian Patrick Wade? Where'd he go? Where's my guy? Hey, there he is. Okay, so this is him. Uh, Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that he would be phenomenal as the Silver Surfer. Um, his, his physique is just insane. Um, let me see. Fitness. So Brian Patrick Wade is just jacked out of his mind. Look at that. Look at those shreds. That that is that is beyond superhero right there. I think that he would be great. He did a great job playing Crusher Creel, and I think that he would be a good pick. Now again, he's on the bonus list. He is um, by, Brian Patrick Wade is a big guy. He's six foot four, 40 years old, um, which is really really freaking big. But nevertheless, um, I think that if Agents of Shield is going to come to an end. 
and it's not really going to prove itself to be part of the greater MCU in an upstream fashion, just downstream. And, and what I mean by that is that the Avengers will happen and then they get to react to it. Um, and instead of the opposite, where if something happens in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you'll see the, the, that kind of thing show itself in the movies. It's not, it doesn't go backwards. It only goes downstream from the movies down to TV. And so uh, in that same way, I think that he would be really good. If you could recycle that, if you could salvage him as an actor, he would be a great uh, Silver Surfer. So next up for the second of my bonus picks, this one might catch you guys by surprise a little bit, but I'll explain it. Chris Wood, and Chris Wood is from Supergirl. He plays Mon-El um, from Daxum, not Krypton, and they're kind of neighbor worlds where like the Daxamites are like the partiers, they're like the, the up, they're kind of like, um, like the middle class kind of people, like middle class Kryptonians, and the Kryptonians are actually like the upper class, and they hate each other. And, uh, and so Daxum kind of like, was super excited not excited but like they were they were not sad at all when krypton exploded until it started to affect their um their world all the all the comets and everything coming down and, and causing chaos and destroying the place so anyway the reason i pick him six foot is a good stature 30 years old is young and he could be around for a while but he has the same like head shape he's got the same look and also I think that you know if he could if he could beef up a little shred out a little bit more i think that'd be great but at the same time um him playing monel has shown that he ha he can play something that's very similar to norin rad so not necessarily the silver surfer but he can play norin rad and what i mean by that is again norin rad um you know he he left his home planet um he had to go and and serve galactus and then when he after he was done he had to go back um, to try after he was done serving Galactus. He left, but he was given the power cosmic as a curse that everyone would remember who he is and he would never be accepted by the people he's trying to help, whether it's by healing or helping them overcome their enemies or, or save their planet, whatever it might be. And so um, as he was a Daxamite, he was the prince of, da of Daxam. He comes and he's trying to help Supergirl and then all these other aliens start to see him and they're highly prejudiced against him because he's a Daxamite. And so because he was associated with the king and queen who were tyrants on his planet, um, then they, they don't accept him and they reject him. And it's very reminiscent of the story of Norinrad, where his gift is his struggle, where he was the prince of Daxum, and now he has all these powers. He's trying to help people, but people don't accept him because they know who he is and where he comes from and what he has done in the past. And so in that same way, he plays a very similar role. So what I've seen translates very nicely. And I think that physically, visually, he does look a lot like he could play a Silver Surfer, a young Silver Surfer, but nevertheless, a Silver Surfer indeed. And he's no stranger to playing aliens in an alien world. So I think that um, if you know his his run on Supergirl comes to a final close or is closed for good, whether whether that's confirmed or whether that's something that could happen, I think that he could be very easily recycled and brought over to uh, Marvel, and that would be a really great opportunity for him as a young actor. But also, um, I think he would do the, the role some justice. He was, he was one of the best parts of Supergirl, honestly. So when he was taken out for like a season uh, and a half, I think it was, um, the fans revolted. They were like, why did you get rid of him? He was the, literally the best part of the story writing. So um, anyway, uh, that I'll, I'll rest it there. But just like, uh, you know, Tyler Holchlin for uh, Namor, I think that you know, not his talents are being wasted because they actually did him some justice, but but I think that it would be a great opportunity for him to come to the Marvel side and get a movie or a series even. So uh, yeah, I think that'd be great. So he again is Chris Wood. He is six foot tall and he is 30 years of age. So my last bonus pick for the Silver Surfer is James McAvoy and James McAvoy as you guys already know was in Split he was in Glass he was uh Mr. Tumnus in the Chronicles of Narnia but also he was in X-Men First Class X-Men Days of Future Past and X-Men Apocalypse and he will be in X-Men uh, Dark Phoenix now uh, I am we are we are all almost entirely certain that the the Fox franchise not is not only coming to a close but they will be getting rebooted because 
Kevin Feige, Bob Iger, they don't want to res they don't want to not use the characters that will be at their disposal. They've said they have intention to use all of the characters at their disposal, which would mean the X-Men. Now, I don't think that allowing the the existing X-Men TV or the film series or the TV series to continue to exist will make any sense in the uh, MCU. The continuity I, I don't see how it makes sense. You could have the mutants in there, but you probably are gonna have to reboot. The timeline's so convoluted, I don't think Kevin Feige wants to deal with any of that. I think he's probably gonna end up recycling some of those actors because they have some of the craziest cast I've ever seen as far as awesome talent. And James McAvoy is one of those. And he's proven that he can play uh, multiple personalities and multiple different characters from the same film, from the same movie. Uh, someone that has struggled with their past, has struggled with prejudice, has struggled with all those things. I think that he would do insanely good playing Norman Rad, uh, the Silver Surfer. Now let's go ahead and just take a look really quick. Um, I pulled up these pictures because obviously his head is already shaved. So you guys already know that because he played Professor X, a character that already was shave headed or bald. Um, so this is him as bald. And this is him, uh, you know, shaved where he's not in like a, a full like bald cap or makeup to make his, you know, hair look like it doesn't exist. Um, but I think that he would be able to play the role. He doesn't, I, think, I don't think his face looks like um, the Silver Surfer. I think that his head shape does. And I think that personality wise, there's very few people other than maybe like I would say Dan Stevens that have the, the capability to play a dichotomy of people within that one character so well and so convincingly um his work in split is unlike anything anybody's ever seen it's incredible and i think that uh he would do really well he it'd probably be no problem for him honestly and i think it would be a shame to not recycle some of these amazing actors from the fox universe um when they get you know retired and then the characters get reborn into the MCU uh, through different actors. And I think that he would do really well playing the Silver Surfer. So let me just recap. James McAvoy, five foot seven, 39 years of age. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna recap the entire list for you guys. Uh, first up for Norrin Rad, we have Ricky Whittle, 37 years old, six foot two. Second, we have Sam Witwer, 41 years of age, six foot one. Next up, after that, for number three, we have Michael Rosenbaum, uh, six, uh, sorry, 46 years of age, six foot tall. Then we have Dan Stevens, 36 years of age, six foot tall. After that, we have Matt Lanter, 35 years of age, five foot 10. And then for the bonus picks, we have three options. We have Brian Patrick Wade, 40 years old, six foot four, a lot taller. After that, we have Chris Wood, 30 years old, six foot tall, so six even. And then we also, to round out the, the list, we have James McAvoy, 39 years of age, five foot seven. And I believe he's the shortest person on the list, um, but nevertheless, I don't think that's gonna be super important. Um, because he'll be basically in the vacuum of space by himself and comparatively to Galactus he's gonna be a spec anyway so it's gonna it's not really like you're gonna be having him in a lineup with a whole other team where height is going to really play a factor into his on-screen presence um, it's basically gonna be just him so and uh, any supporting characters he might run into scroll Cree or um, you know it could be could be anybody so that's what I have to say about that. So let me just go ahead and recap. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I wanna hear from you guys. Who on my list is your favorite selection? Was there someone that you guys liked for the role that I didn't name? And then also make sure uh, to let me know down below um, if you guys want to see the Fox characters from, from like the X-Men Days of Future Past brought into the MCU or if you think that those guys should stay out of it and it should just be totally separate because that might be too confusing. I want to hear from you guys about all of these things. So thank you guys so much for watching my Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer fan casting video. I've got another one on the way and I've got another major fan casting event coming up very soon this weekend. Um, be sure on February 23rd to check into my channel around noon Pacific Standard Time 
or uh, otherwise you'll be able to find the video afterward, after the premiere, uh, so that you guys can see some of the craziest fan castings you've ever seen. It's gonna be the biggest fan casting event of all time, hands down. There is no bigger fan casting than right here on the channel at the Stuff of Legend because I have your opinions in mind and I wanna hear from you. That's the whole point. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, click the thumbs up button. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure to turn on notifications so that you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. That way you guys won't miss a thing. Anyway, stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.